away for 10 minutes so you can have an opportunity for proposing to Gwendolyn. May I dine with you tonight at Lewis's? I suppose so if you want to. Yes, but you must be serious about it. I hate people who are not serious about meals. It's just so shallow. Lady <laughs> <laughs> Bracknell and Miss Fairfax. I hope you are behaving quite well. I'm feeling very well, Aunt Augusta. That's well, not quite the same thing. In fact, the two things rarely go together. <laughs> Dear me, you are smart. I'm always smart. Am I not, Mr. Worthing? You're quite perfect, Miss Fairfax. Oh, I hope I'm not that. It would leave no room for developments, and I intend to develop in many directions. I'm obliged to call upon Dear Lady Harbury. I haven't been there since her poor husband's death. I've never seen a woman look quite so altered. She looks quite 20 years younger. <laughs> and now I'll have a gin and tonic and one of those nice cucumber sandwiches you promised me. Certainly, Aunt Augusta. Won't you come and sit here, Gwendolyn? Thanks, Mama. I'm quite comfortable where I am. Good heavens! Hey! Why are there no cucumber sandwiches? I ordered them specially. There were no cucumbers at the market this morning, sir. I went down twice. No cucumbers? Not even for ready money. <laughs> That's not too late. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I am greatly distressed, Aunt Augusta, about there being no cucumbers. Not even for ready money. Uh, I've quite a treat for you tonight, Alton. I'm going to send you down with Mary Parker. She's such a nice woman, and so attentive to her husband. It's delightful to watch them. I'm afraid, Aunt Augusta, I shall have to give up the pleasure of dining with you tonight after all. I certainly hope not, Algernon. It'll put my table quite out. Your uncle would have to dine upstairs. Fortunately, he is accustomed to that. <laughs> it is a great unfortunate, and it is a great disappointment to myself, I must say, but uh, the fact is, I've just had a call to say my poor friend Bunbury is very ill again. They seem to think I should be with him. It is very strange, this Mr. Bunbury seems to suffer from curiously bad health. Yes, Bunbury is a dreadful invalid. <laughs> well, it seems to me, Algernon, that it's high time that this Mr. Bunbury made up his mind whether to live or to die. This shilly shally with the question is quite absurd. Nor do I in any way approve of this modern sympathy with invalids. I consider it morbid. <laughs> Illness in any form is hardly a thing to be encouraged in others. <laughs> Health is the primary duty of life. I'm forever telling this to your poor uncle, but he doesn't seem to take much notice. As far as any improvement in his ailment goes. I can promise you he'll be alright for Saturday. Uh, of course, I was going to do the music for you on Saturday, and uh, that will be a very difficult thing because uh, music, if one plays good music, people don't listen, and if one plays bad music, people don't talk. But I will run over the programme I've drawn up for you if you'll kindly come to the next room for a moment. That's very kind of you, Alton. Gwendolyn, you will accompany with me. Certainly, Mama. Pray don't talk to me about the weather, Mr. Worthing. <laughs> when people talk to me about the weather, I always feel quite certain they need something else. Nervous. Oh. I do mean something else. I thought so. In fact, I'm never wrong. And I would like to take advantage of Lady Bracknell's temporary absence. I would certainly advise you to do so. Mama has a way of coming back suddenly into a room. I've often had to speak to her about it. <laughs> Me, you've always had an irresistible fascination. Even before I met you, I was far from indifferent to you. It has always been my idea to love someone of the name of Jack is a notorious domesticity for John, and I pity any woman who is 
married to a man named John. The only really safe name is Ernest. We <laughs> <laughs> must get married at once. There's no time to be lost. Married, Mr. Worthing. Wonderfully green eyes you have, Ernest. Quite, quite green. Oh, I hope you'll always look at me just like that. Especially when there are other people present. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Worthing, rise, sir, from your semi-recondent posture. It is most indecorous. Ma, I must beg you to retire. This is no place for you. Besides, Mr. Worthing has not quite finished yet. Finished what? May I ask? I am engaged to Mr. Worthing, Mama. Pardon me, you are not engaged to anyone. When you do become engaged to someone, I, or your father, should his health permit it, will inform you of the fact. <laughs> An engagement should come upon a young lady as a, a surprise. Peasant or rampant, <laughs> as you can <laughs> say, maybe. It's hardly a thing that should be arranged for herself. <laughs> Mr. Worthing, I have a few questions to put to you. Gwendolyn, the car. But the car? The car, Gwendolyn. Yes, Mama. 